one of the few warrior factions operating during the years of Mandalorian pacifism. The Protectors acted as royal guards for Duchess Satine until her death and the fall of her government. Under the leadership of Fen Rao, they allied with the Empire after the Clone Wars and were granted control of the conquered Dawn system. Respected warriors, the Protectors were brought on by the Republic to train clone soldiers, with Fen Rao serving alongside Jedi in conflicts like the Third Battle of Megiddo. When the war ended, they survived by remaining loyal to the government as it transitioned into an empire. But now, they faced problems at home as Fen Rao's enemy Gar Saxon became Imperial Viceroy of Mandalore. Learning that the Protectors were allowing rebel ships through their space unchallenged, Saxon saw the chance to strike and ordered the entire clan massacred, though Fen Rao survived as he was being held by the rebel cell of Kanan Jarrus and Harris Indula. Though he initially blamed his captors for preventing him from being with his people, Fen eventually joined the rebellion seeking vengeance against Gar Saxon and the Empire. As fate would have it, Fen went on to serve as an advisor for young Sabine Wren, another Mandalorian member of the ghost ship Rebel Cell, when she discovered the Darksaber during a mission on Dathomir. Having long since abandoned his claim to Mandalore, Maul became obsessed with seeking vengeance against Obi-Wan Kenobi and merely saw the weapon as a trophy, eventually leaving it abandoned in his pursuit of the enemy. Explaining the history of the weapon and its significance to their people, Fen asked Sabine to claim the Darksaber and become Mandalore, uniting their people in opposition to Gar Saxon and the Empire. Encouraged by her rebel comrades who sought an alliance with Mandalore, the Jedi Kanan and his Padawan Ezra trained her in lightsaber combat before they traveled to Cronist, seeking support from the rest of Clan Wren. Under the rule of Sabine's mother, Ursa Wren, former comrade of Bo-Katan, Clan Wren survived by pledging themselves to the Empire and so refused Sabine's call to action, instead contacting Gar Saxon to come arrest the rebels. Unfortunately, Ursa felt this was necessary to save her clan and daughter, as Sabine was hated by many Mandalorians due to her time as a student in the Imperial Academy, where she designed a weapon specifically targeting Mandalorian armor. Though she destroyed the plans before they could be used to full effect, Clan Wren's reputation was destroyed and thus were unlikely to be accepted as unifying leaders, even with the Darksaber. Therefore, Ursa made a deal with Saxon, handing over the Rebels as well as the Darksaber in exchange for pardoning Sabine. But Saxon ultimately betrayed their deal, declaring all of Clan Wren guilty before leading an army to exterminate their people. Aided by the rebels, Clan Wren emerged victorious, with Sabine defeating Gar Saxon in single combat and taking back the Darksaber. Though she chose to spare his life and refused the title of Mandalore, Sabine vowed she would find the one worthy of that honor. Knowing Saxon was too dangerous to live, Ursa Wren executed him when her daughter refused and renounced her allegiance to the Empire, starting another civil war. Focusing all of their attention on this conflict, Clan Wren did not join the larger rebel movement, but parted on amiable terms, with Sabine and Fen Rao remaining behind to fight for Mandalore. Gathering an alliance to oppose Imperial rule, Clan Wren was joined by Bo-Katan and the Night Owls, Clan Kreez, Clan Vizsla, Clan Rook, and Clan Elder, eventually killing Gar's brother Tibur Saxon and taking control of the homeworld, where Sabine presented Bo-Katan with the Darksaber, allowing her to reclaim the title of Mandalore. Yet once again, her reign was fated for tragedy, as the end of the Galactic Civil War saw the Empire order a great purge on Mandalore, devastating the planet and population. Though Bo-Katan survived the battle, she lost everything, including the Darksaber, which came into the possession of Moff Gideon, a ruthless yet cunning Imperial Loyalist. Fleeing into exile, Bo-Katan refused to accept defeat, determined to unify whatever Mandalorians remained so they might retake their homeworld and re-establish their society. In order to legitimize her authority after so many failures, Bo-Katan planned to honor ancient traditions by personally defeating Moff Gideon to reclaim the Darksaber. Having broken away from Mandalorian society to establish their own culture, zealously dedicated to the preservation of ancient traditions, some of those within the Children of the Watch survived the Great Purge, which devastated their home system, but even so were affected by this loss, becoming high-value enemies to the Empire, sending most Mandalorians into hiding in the Outer Rim. After the defeat of the Empire, the danger of being targeted by the Imperial Remnant remained, and so surviving clans continued to hide, with some, like the Children of the Watch tribe on Navarro, allowing only one of their people outside the Sanctuary at a time. 
taking work as mercenaries. This clan soon made more enemies when the Mandalorian Din Djarin broke a contract provided through the Bounty Hunters Guild by refusing to deliver a Force-sensitive child to the Imperial Remnant. Adopting the boy as a foundling, the way of the Mandalore demanded Din protect the child, leading him to a shootout with the Bounty Hunters Guild as they sought to repair their damaged reputation. On the verge of defeat, Din and the Foundling were saved by the rest of the tribe, who broke their rules of secrecy by emerging all at once in order to uphold the ancient way by defending their people no matter the cost. Despite their victory against the guild, they were targeted by the Imperial Remnant, which sent an army to wipe them all out. One of the few to survive and flee the planet, Din Djarin was given a new sigil and special mission by the Clan Armorer, tasked with returning the Force-sensitive child to the fabled Jedi of ancient legends. Making a number of enemies along the way, including Moff Gideon who desperately pursued the powerful child for research and experimentation, the Mandalorian and his ward also made a number of allies, including Bo-Katan Kryze, who taught him some of the history of their people to explain how she and her comrades could be Mandalorians without following the way of the Mandalore. Having been sheltered from what went on beyond the tribe, Din was shocked to learn he was raised by an extremist faction and in time started to lessen his strict adherence to the code, even removing his helmet when absolutely necessary. Gathering warriors and supplies to win back Mandalore, Bo-Katan tried to recruit Din, but his only priority was the child, and so he continued on until finding the former Jedi Padawan Ahsoka Tano. Yet she refused to train the child, who she revealed was named Grogu, after sensing his attachment to the Mandalorian, fearing it would ultimately lead him to the dark side, as it did for her master Anakin Skywalker. Remaining determined to find someone for the boy's training, Ahsoka directed Din to the planet Tython, where a ritual sent a force signal into the galaxy to attract the attention of a Jedi. Unfortunately, they were then found by the Empire, which distracted the Mandalorian and captured Grogu after the ritual completed. Mounting a rescue mission, Din Djarin was joined by his allies, the warrior Cara Dune, the assassin Fennec Shand, the night owls Bo-Katan and Koska Reeves, and the famous bounty hunter Boba Fett, wearing his own Mandalorian armor. Though Boba was not a Mandalorian, he was fiercely protective of the armor left to him by his father Jango Fett, a foundling from Conquered Dawn who fought in the Mandalorian Civil War. Considered by some to be the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy, Jango was hired by Count Dooku to help accomplish the goals of his Sith master Darth Sidious. Taking advantage of his martial prowess, Jango Fett became the human template used by the Kaminoans to clone a great army for the Republic, making his appearance and voice famous throughout the galaxy. As part of the payment he demanded, Jango had a special clone created with no alterations to raise as a son. Naming him Boba and training him as a bounty hunter, the boy started accompanying his father on missions at a young age, and thus was present when his father fought for the Separatists during the First Battle of Geonosis. Watching proudly from a relatively safe distance, Boba's joy turned to horror when Jango was beheaded by Mace Windu, instilling in him a deep hatred for the Jedi Order. Recovering his father's Mandalorian armor, Boba followed in his footsteps by becoming a famed bounty hunter, even earning the same reputation as best in the galaxy. Also like his father, he eventually came to work for the Sith under the Dark Lord's new apprentice Darth Vader. Yet his fall from glory came during his service to the crime lord Jabba the Hutt, facing off against the Jedi Luke Skywalker and his allies on Tatooine. Falling into a deadly Sarlacc pit, Boba Fett was thought to be dead, but actually survived the encounter, remaining in seclusion for years as he searched for his lost armor. Though the gear survived the Sarlacc, it ended up in the possession of a local, who later gave it as payment to the Mandalorian Din Djarin. Tracking him down, the armor was returned to Boba Fett, and the two became allies, working together to rescue Grogu. With Boba Fett providing a distraction, the others boarded Moff Gideon's ship and split up, with most taking the bridge, while Din went to search for the child. Unfortunately, Moff Gideon anticipated this action and was waiting with Grogu, where he attacked the Mandalorian with the Darksaber. Engaging in single combat, Din emerged victorious, capturing Gideon, taking the Darksaber, and rescuing the child. Yet when he reached the bridge, his lack of knowledge concerning mainstream Mandalorian culture betrayed him, learning that Bo-Katan could only claim the Darksaber and title of Mandalore if she won the weapon in personal combat. Since Din defeated Gideon, the Darksaber was his, and even were he to offer it to her freely, Bo-Katan could not accept. Therefore, in order for her to claim the Darksaber, she would have to fight Din in honorable combat. 
Yet before the issue could be decided, Moff Gideon's elite dark troopers made their way to the bridge, threatening to kill them all, only for the immensely powerful Jedi Master Luke Skywalker to arrive on his X-Wing, destroying the entire platoon on his own. Greeting the Mandalorian, he came to take Grogu for training, and so Din said a heartfelt goodbye before handing him over. With their Jedi business concluded and Moff Gideon in custody, it fell to Din Djarin and Bo-Katan Kryze to settle the issue of leadership for the Mandalorian people. A special thanks to all those who contribute to Civilization X, like Soul Guide Medical, Sir Jeremiah Ironside of House Comsia, Sir Daron of House Ashford, and Knight of Iron and Ice, Fred Heartless. If you'd like to help the channel, please go to patreon.com slash civilizationx, where you can get early access to videos, vote on future content, and access the Patreon-only series, Heroes of Lore and Legend.